welcome to south asian environment dialogue those of you who see this program every sunday you know that this is the program where we discuss range of issues of south asia issues regarding environment and climate change first of all i should say merry christmas and ensuring new year to all of you also to my guests who are wonderful panel i'll be introducing the panel later to you but before i go to today's program uh, let me let me share with you the some of the main news uh, from south asia this week to start with uh, the growing impacts of climate change have already pushed more than 18 million people to migrate within south asian countries but that may actually be troubled if global warming continues on its current path said action at international and climate action network south asia kansa in a recent report the report says that nearly 63 million people could be forced from their homes by 2050 in the region as rising seas and rivers swallow villages and drought hit land no longer supports crops while india is likely to have the highest number of climate migrants the comparative rise will be maximum in bangladesh it is not a new news but a new report saying a new data and a new concern next is on saturday indian space research organization chairman k shivan said that the space agency was developing green propulsion for its ambitious human space flight mission called gangunjan as india continues to focus on economic growth five four it needs to ensure that environmental damage is limited by adopting green technologies said shivan isro has made space grade lithium ion batteries and this technology is useful for mass adoption of electric vehicle that's a very very encouraging news and finally not so encouraging india's farmers unions asked government to hold talks on next tuesday the request came as 40 farm unions held a meeting to chalk out their future course of action and take a decision on holding talks with the center as the deadlock continues over the new agricultural laws being pushed by the bjp led union government the agitation near delhi borders which began late november has entered its 31st day five rounds of talks between the government and farmers have failed so far in the last few months but there is always a hope next time so that's some of the major news is from from south asia uh today the program as you know is being brought by climate channel a television channel from canada in collaboration with the plurals Uh, indian media platform today we'll be talking about the fishes today we'll be talking about where the fishes have gone or are they going anywhere how is the fishery industry and we have some of the best names in the region to talk about it let me let me introduce let me they introduce the panel for you I have with me today uh, Rajarshi Banerji. Rajarshi is the president of Seafood Explorers Associations of India West Bengal region, and also linked to is a member of the Marine Products Export Development Authority. Welcome, Rajarshi, to the program. Good evening and welcome. Uh, thank you. Then, Dr. Dilip Kumar, policy advisor from India. he has worked with so range of organization fao of united nations united nations and he's also the ex director uh uh dr pushpalata is the director 
National Aquaculture Development Authority of Sri Lanka, Dr. Pushpala. Uh, we are also having Dr. Jugraj Singh Jadava, who is the director of Bihar Bengal program of the intergovernmental organization. And I know his immense work in the sector. Uh, I'm really, really privileged to have you, Dr. Jadava, in this program. Welcome to the show. Good evening. Good evening, everybody, and uh, uh, though a day late, but still wish you all Merry Christmas. Absolutely, and to all of you, all of you. Happy Absolutely. and joyful New Year 2021. Absolutely. And uh, we have today Dr. Abdullah Nasir. Uh, Dr. Nasir is the Vice President of the Maldives Coral Reef Society. And welcome to the show, Dr. Nasir. I know it's a short notice, but so, so privileged to have you, sir, in this program. Thank you very and much. then I have two wonderful experts from Bangladesh. Uh, Dr. Nausad Alam uh, is a professor of Bangladesh Agricultural University from Mamanshin, Bangladesh. Welcome, Dr. Alam. Yeah. Good evening to everybody and uh, Happy New Year 2021. I think in advance. <laughs> In fact, in fact, Dr. Nasir was going to say something when I think I started introducing uh, Dr. Alam. Dr. Nasir, you, I think you, were, you were just kind of saying something. Uh, a quick word? I, I just wanted to say uh, uh, good evening and uh, okay. thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. You to, to and, and let me also tell you that since this program started about four months back, three or four months back, uh, this is the first time we have somebody from Maldives. So I hope with your support in, in, in times to come, we'll be having more representation from Maldives because Maldives needs to be heard in this platform. We, we really want Maldives to be heard here. And then finally, I ha we have uh, with me uh, Dr. <coughs> Dr. Rashidul Haq from Bangladesh. He's the former Director General of Department of Fisheries Bangladesh. Dr. Hawk, welcome to the show. I know your immense expertise in this area and your work. So I think we'll all be privileged to hear you today, today evening. So that's the panel for you. That's okay. the panel. Thank you. Thank you. That's the panel. Let me, let me start. As I said, that we'll be trying to find out three basic things from today's program we try to do. We'll try to understand the present scenario. We'll try to understand the present problems and also the solution. So there's no point only in talking about the problems, not about the solution. So we have around 45, 50 minutes at our disposal to discuss a very important topic. I know this time is inadequate, but this is the structure and we all have to complete by that time. So let me start with Dr. Dilip Kumar. Dr. Kumar, fishery. And before I go to Dr. Dilip Kumar, let me share a couple of data with you. I think which is, uh, you all know this data, but for our the people who are seeing this program, South Asia, South Asia, occupies only 3.5% of world surface area, but 25% of the global population live here. So that clearly shows the amount, the population density. And then if you look at the coastline, South Asia has, uh, I'm talking about India, Bangladesh, Maldives, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan, to <coughs> particularly, more than 10,000 kilometers of coastline. India has about 7,500 likewise, but then uh, Bangladesh is having about 580. The figure that I have, you may be correcting it in future. Uh, the Maldives have about 300, Sri Lanka about 1300, and Pakistan around 1000. And more or less 10 million people in South Asia depend on fishery for survival, for their livelihoods. The figure is much, much bigger than many of the European countries taken together. So that sums up the impact 
of uh, the importance of fishery sector in South Asia because government need not to do anything for their employment. They find their employment. Government has just to provide them a quality water and other environmental factors so that they can do the fishing proper way. But is it happening? Dr. Dilip Kumar, let me start with you. What is the current situation in India's marine fishery? Um, marine fisheries, really, uh, we had some time where just to see it is stagnated for some time, but again, just but the growth is marginal, quite marginal. It is still growing. And uh, but at the same time, inland fisheries compared to marine fisheries, inland fisheries is really growing at a much faster speed. So currently, it provides about something like 28 or 30, one third, you can say, or more specifically, it is about 28 uh, percent of the total fish production is come from uh, marine fisheries. And okay. but the one, one thing is very important that you see about 3.8, about 4 million people are somehow just to see engaged directly or indirectly uh, with uh, marine fisheries. They are involved in different activities. Uh, some of them are. Uh, directly just to see active, uh, involved in active fishing, but uh, there are some other uh, jobs are also there where they are involved. It is transport, packaging, marketing, uh, processing, and so on. And uh, But uh, one very important thing is that about, say, 54% women are also involved in this. Okay. And women, that is very important. And then women, they are involved mainly in marketing of the fish, and also in the processing industry, they are also there. And many of them are that you see, they are catching larvae, shrimp larvae from the from the coastal area, so that it goes to aquaculture to feed the aquaculture uh, industry. And also, they also collect shells in some of the areas, and that is also being marketed for both. It has got ornamental value, and at the same time, it is a well something uh, source of calcium that is also used in animal feed industry. So there are just to see, and one thing is very important here that that uh, almost more than 50%, uh, it, it uh, production comes from artisanal fisheries. They are okay. traditional fishers. Okay. Mm, they are quite poor. And uh, just to see, they don't have really just to see mechanized boats or motorized boats. Okay. Some of them, they have motorized, not trawler. So they're resource poor communities, and then they draw their livelihood from here, okay. uh, from this marine fishery. Okay, I'll be uh, coming. Yeah. I'll coming to you, Dr. Dilip Kumar, later to discuss yeah. more about their problems and issues. But let me let okay. me let me go over to Dr. Jugrat Singh Jadab, uh, as because we have started talking India. Let let us uh, kind of talk about the Indian part. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Jadab, I, I remember that uh, maybe a few years back. Uh, I, I, I bumped into a fisherman uh, in, 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 uh, at the border of West Bengal and, and Bihar. And, and he said that the time he previously had to give to catch certain amount of fish, now the time has tripled, doubled or trebled. So the fishes are going dwindling. Fishes are dwindling. What is the actual scenario? Because so many people depend on fishery sector uh, for survival for their livelihoods. Dr. Jadav, what is your point on that? Yeah. Are almost exploited Have to now their to move optimum further levels. up in the sea. And the result Catch is the fish. that fishermen and uh, have now you to know, move further up in the sea to catch the fish. And uh, you know, the sea is the country, and for the shells, you know, up to twelve. Miles, which is also the 
area which is within the jurisdiction of the coastal states yes. and the area outside 12 nautical miles gets into the jurisdiction of the central government. So within this 12 nautical mile, the sources are almost optimally exploited. Okay. And the result is that fishermen are now going outside the 12 nautical mile area. And there is, you know, capitalization in the sector. No longer, you know, we have uh, the traditional fishermen as we had in the past. Now, even the traditional fishermen are using two outboard motors. They're taking up to 30, 40 nautical miles in the sea okay. and catching fish. Okay. So I think the scenario has completely changed. And uh, I would once again, you know, agree with you that yes, Fishermen are now, you know, they have to move further up in the sea to is catch it, is fish. It, is it for the yeah. dwindling of the fish uh, uh, kind of catch, uh, the fish in the sea, the, the fishes are being dwindling in the fish in the sea? What's your point? You see, uh, you know... Oil is overfishing. Thing, yeah, the good thing is that, you know, we are in a tropical climate okay. where most of the varieties, they bounce back very quickly. Okay, okay. But, but you know, in, in the scientific terms... The effort that is being deployed to catch fish is now almost double the effort that is uh, actually required. Absolutely. That's the point I was trying to make. Yeah. So that's the reason that, you know, people are able to catch less fish in the territorial waters and they have to move outside the territorial waters to catch fish and, uh, you know, get their livelihoods. Okay. Okay. So I think uh, we, we need to discuss it in a greater depth, but let let talk to Raj Rajashi. Rajashi, you, you you are the person who uh, kind of look after this issue of see uh, the commercial part of it, uh, the the marine products going outside India like that. What's the situation out there? What what, what your take on this whole situation of the marine products, Rajashi? Uh, I will uh, initially. Uh, good evening to all. I will initially talk about the issues concerning the marine catch. We have to understand that the marine product processing stroke exports is concerned with the marine catch, which, which uh, pertains to the sea, and the aquaculture, which is actually the inland development of the fishery resources. Now, as far as I uh, understand, we are having primarily a discussion about the marine stroke, the sea catch. Okay. Now, the issues which are concerned, the, which are the main issues as far as the marine catch is concerned in India of, of the last two decades, as well as the current time, um, as, as in the current time, is uh, declining catches and overfishing in coastal waters. Okay, So essentially what's happening, uh, like my uh, previous speaker already commented, the near coast <coughs> waters fishery resources are almost exhausted because the government hasn't actually enabled the fishermen to venture out into the sea, to, to why, far away from the coastline. So, so what we are seeing in terms of declining fish catches is what fishermen are, are catching within 30 to 40 kilometers of the shore. However, Absolutely. India's EEZ actually extends much beyond that. And there are uh, huge resources uh, more than 4 million tons uh, annually of resources existing in those waters which belongs to India, which primarily contains of a large amount number of species headed by the yellowfin tuna and the skipjack tuna. Okay. Now, so, so what are the issues here? Declining catches and overfishing in coastal waters in, in the near waters. Next is the post-harvest losses which is discarding of the, the unimportant species, the spoilage and reduced quality. Next, habitat degradation. Habitat degradation from industrial waste, domestic sewage, pesticides, etc. We will come, we will discuss it specifically, Rajashri, that because that is, that's a very important issue of the pollution and the climate change. But yeah. just uh, for, this, for, for this particular round, if you can just tell us that it's a very important point you raised actually, that suboptimal use of our area of fish that we have, yes. but we'll come to that. But just what is the kind of uh, scenario in, in, in the commercial scenario? Let's, is let's it the just, going more or is it going brief, down? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just briefly highlighting, you know, why the, why the fish catch is going sure. down. Uh, because the near shore resource is actually being over harvested. There are illegal, unreported, unregulated landings. Uh, there is poor implementation of regulations like mesh size of nets. Okay. These are factors which are cumulatively contributing to the fall in the fish catches in the near coast waters. Okay. But but let us be clear. You know uh, there are there are facilities for developing, uh, enabling Indian fishermen to go out further away from the coast to harvest the resources which India has, as well as they can venture out into the international waters. Now what's happening as far as the east coast is concerned, as well as some parts of the west coast, a large number of vessels from Southeast Asia are actually. Domestic sewage, pesticides, etc. We will come. We will discuss it specifically, Rajashree, that because that is there's a very important issue: the pollution and the climate change. But just for this, but for this particular round, if you can just tell us that it is a very important okay. point you raised. That's, that's very interesting. Some optimal that's use of all all area of fish that we have. have. Collective yeah. dialogue we'll comes come to that. But just that how you can stop in cutting uh, into each other's territory. Scenario in, in in the commercial scenario. Is it the going more or is it going down? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just just briefly highlighting, you know, why the why the fish catch is going sure. down. Uh, because the near shore resource is actually being over harvested. There are illegal, unreported, unregulated landings. Uh, there is poor implementation of regulations like mesh size of nets. Okay. These are factors which are cumulatively contributing to the fall in the fish catches in the near coast waters. Okay. But but let us be clear. You know, uh, there are there are facilities for developing, uh, enabling India. Fishermen to go out further away from the coast to harvest the resources which India has, as well as they can venture out into the international waters. Now what's happening as far as the East Coast is concerned, as well as some parts of the West Coast, a large number of vessels from Southeast Asia are actually coming illegally into Indian waters, fishing and stealing our resources, which is also contributing to declining fish catch by the Indian fishermen. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. And I think that's where this whole, whole, whole importance of being collective dialogue comes into the picture, that how you can stop being cutting into each other's territory and actually can be a win-win scenario. Uh, let let go to let go to uh, Dr. Nasir. Dr. Nasir, I think Maldives. I think Maldives. We all know Maldives for its fishery. What's the situation out there? Because Maldives has been one of the areas in the world which is being maximally impacted by climate change and other factors. So, what's the current situation in Maldives, Dr. Nasir? Yes, thank you. Um, I think the Maldives is best known uh, as the world's leading destination for tourists, actually. So uh, people will be wondering why uh, we even talk about fisheries uh, if, when, when the Maldives is the world's leading destination for tourists. In fact, uh, the, the, the largest influx of uh, tourists uh, since we opened uh, after COVID uh, is from <laughs> Russia and India is second. So India, I have been visiting uh, the Maldives and know this very well. But uh, although, um, uh, although uh, we, we are a touristic nation, historically the Maldives has always been a fishing nation. We have been fishing for 2000 years and uh, we have depended on uh, fish and fisheries for as long as uh, we know. Um, and, and, and we are very good at uh, catching tuna and tuna-like species. Uh, so we catch uh, about 120 to 130 metric, uh, thousand met uh, metric tons of fish. Uh, of which uh, the majority uh, is tuna, um, mainly skipjack tuna and yellowfin tuna. So, so we have very specific fisheries 
uh, on skipjacks, uh, a, a skipjack fishery, a yellowfin fishery, and also an inshore reef fishery. So the, these, this, this is the, uh, the the three main types of uh, uh, reef, uh, three main types of fisheries that uh, the Maldivian fishermen evolve on, and we are highly dependent on fish and fisheries, and so uh, we we cannot. Uh, we, we, we cannot part with fisheries uh, despite uh, the uh, developments in tourism. We have about, uh, the population of the Maldives is about 400,000 and um, at least uh, 20,000 uh, are fishermen. And uh, well, that includes tuna and both uh, coastal fisheries as well. And you can imagine when you multiply that 20,000 uh, by maybe a family of four or five, that becomes uh, 100,000 and so 100, one total. Of the country, one fourth of the population of the countries are are totally and totally dependent on directly dependent on income they earn daily uh, from fish um, from fishing. So this is this is something that we have to look at when you look at the uh, dynamics of different nations around uh, the Bay of Bengal um, and okay. uh, the, the, how we, we can show how important uh, fisheries is uh, for the economy, for well-being, for livelihoods, and also for the uh, economic development of the country. So yeah, th that that is basically the uh, how how the f the fishery in the Maldives uh, is uh, operates. You know. Okay, uh, just uh, before I go over to the uh, next part, uh, what is the current situation? Uh, you mentioned it, but very precisely that uh, is it, is it, are you facing trouble to uh, in, in the fishery sector or are you are happy what right now is there? What's your uh, take on that? We, uh, we, we uh, of, of the fish species that we catch, uh, about 80% uh, of our uh, catch. Uh, will be uh, skipjack tuna. And okay. uh, skipjack okay. tuna stocks are considered to be, uh, in the Indian Ocean, stick, skipjack tuna stocks are uh, thought to be um, uh, robust and um, uh, well-managed, um, the skipjack tuna, but not other tuna species. Okay. So in that sense, we are doing very well. We also have, uh, 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 we, we have we have the uh, uh <coughs> Manage to keep to um, pollen line fishing, the uh, method we don't use any nets, which is completely banned in the Maldives for tuna fishing. So, uh, in that sense, we in the Maldives um, have a reputation for for being involved in a sustainable form of uh, fishing, especially when it comes to uh, tuna and tuna like species. Okay, okay, okay. great. I think we, we need to know more about the Maldives uh, fishery sector and how a kind of a collective regional policy. Uh, can be structured at or, or aimed at. But let me go to Sri Lanka first. Uh, uh, Dr. Pushpa, can you hear me? Uh, are you there? Can, you, can I have the uh, kind of opinion from Sri Lanka? Dr. Pushpa? Yes. Uh, oh, great. We can, we yeah. can see you and hear you. Great. Please tell us, because yeah. I know your connectivity is an issue. So please tell yeah. us that what's the situation in Sri Lanka? How is the fishery sector doing? Is it, is it, are you happy with that? Is it growing or it's Diluting what's actually happening out in Sri Lanka. Dr. Pushpa. Yeah, uh, in Sri Lanka, we uh, it's a growing sector, especially in marine and also in Indian fisheries and aquaculture, it's uh, going up. And uh, in Sri Lanka, more than 86% of the fish production coming from the marine sector. Uh, marine sector involved in the coastal fishery and deep sea. In addition to that, around 14% fish production coming from the inland fishery. It is the growing sector because there are a lot of reservoirs available for the development and uh, water resources available for the expansion of the aquaculture. Therefore, uh, regarding the uh, marine sector, tuna fish is the main species contributing. Nice main one. Yeah, in addition to that, uh, the other sort tailfish, shark, shearfish, travelly and mallet also contributing. In the Indian fishery sector, there are carp, tilapia varieties contributing for the uh, fish production. Regarding the uh, number of fishermen, more than 2.6 million people engage and providing livelihood for the fisheries and aquaculture sector. And uh, regarding the export uh, fishery products, uh, around uh, 
275 million contribute uh, through the export market uh, by okay. exporting the fish product. Okay. Right? Okay. And per capita in Sri Lanka now around 16.8 kilograms uh, per Is year. the sector growing, Dr. Pushpa? Yes, now uh, marine sector not growing so much. It's coming. Uh, yeah, coastal fishery is uh, stable now, so we can't expand further. That's why most of the fishermen uh, uh, finding uh, livelihoods in aquaculture sector. They are joined to the aquaculture sector, seaweed culture, coastal the aquaculture. Sheep and all. The sheep and all. Yeah. But okay. in the deep sea, there are so many problems to expand because of the high cost. And, and there is an opportunity to expand deep sea fishing. Uh, one, of the, one of the participants from India said, Rajeshi actually said that India is being suboptimally using its uh, marine uh, resources. The, the fishermen are not going beyond a point where they can. So is the same thing in Sri Lanka? Are you also, <laughs> do you feel that you are suboptimally using your water resources in the sea? Uh, in uh, marine sector, deep sea, there is a uh, opportunity to expand, but coastal okay. fishery already, the small scale fishermen are optimum utilizing that so resource. Optimal, you yeah. reached optimum level. level. Yes, okay. but okay. Uh, the inland fishery, there is a big uh, potential to expand. That's why okay. government also giving more attention to the inland okay. and aquaculture. Okay. 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 I think I, I understand this inland fishery and the Kind of a complete marine fishery, perhaps the borderline is not very straight and it's, they overlap into each other. I know from the experts from that. But let me go to now to Bangladesh. I, I, I come to Bangladesh the last, the first, last part of this first round because Bangladesh, and then I am from the Indian state of West Bengal, which is basically a kind of a part of Bangladesh, beside Bangladesh in Indian part. And we are, we are all fish lovers. Bengalis cannot pass a day without fishes. So what's the yeah. situation in Bangladesh? May, may I start with Dr. Alam and then I'll come over to uh, the uh, other expert. Dr. Alam, what's the situation in Bangladesh, in, both in marine fishing and in general? Dr. Alam. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Basil. And uh, actually, you know, Bangladesh is a very tiny country. It's only one lakh and 48 square kilometer country. And uh, this country has to nourish uh, 170 million people. So our fish production is huge, uh, both inland and marine. Uh, and uh, in total, we are producing 4.2 million metric tons of fish. It is okay. the world largest uh, per capita, uh, per uh, unit area land production. If you consider the production per unit area of land, it would be the uh, largest production so far in the world because from a very tiny areas, we are producing a huge number of fish. And our fish covers uh, almost 86% from inland uh, uh, capture and culture fishery and 14% from marine fishery. Okay. And you see in a capture fishery, uh, culture fishery in, the, in Bangladesh, it's a social revolution because we have to culture fish, we have to explore more and more uh, new resource in the fisheries, uh, both uh, inland capture, culture, and marine capture also. And we're also going to introduce some uh, coastal aquaculture and marine culture also because we have to. Otherwise, we cannot nourish our people. And that's why it's become a social revolution in the country whole. And uh, what is happening in the actually in capture fishery, our uh, in marine sector, we have industrial fishery and also artisanal fishery. But artisanal fishery is covering almost 95% of total marine fisheries. Oh. Because uh, cap uh, industrial fishery is only one uh, out of 6 point, uh, 0.65 million metric ton. Only 0.12 million metric ton are coming from industrial fisheries and 0.53 million metric tons are coming from artisanal fisheries. But one great thing is that this artisanal fishery includes hillsha fishery. It is one of mm -hmm. the loveliest fish in the world most tastiest fish so far in the world. We all consider it the most tastiest fish in the world. And uh, it is uh, uh, from our uh, okay. uh, almost okay. a 60 to 70 percent of total hilsha catch are coming from Bangladesh waters. The and global hilsha catch. And uh, for the last uh, couple of years, for the last 10 years, 
uh, because of so many interventions from the Department of Fisheries and from the Ministry of Fisheries and Livestock and from the research organizations, uh, for example, Bangladesh Fisheries Research Institute and the universities, they, with their joint effort, the Hilsha resource have uh, developed tremendously. Almost a 20 to 25 percent uh, production rise has been happening. Uh, so, so you, so you are basically saying that the fishery sector is growing well, is doing well in Bangladesh, is growing. Yeah. Yes, it is growing, especially in inland capture uh, um, culture fishery. It is tremendously growing, and in uh, uh, marine fishery also, but because uh, for the last couple of years, marine fishery also has raised tremendously, including okay. the okay. hillshire and other fisheries. So, it okay, is great. Growing. Let us With hear so from many measures and measures have been taken by the government. Okay, great. Let us hear from Dr. Hawk. Dr. Hawk, uh, I have been to Bangladesh a few times and met many people, including the fisher folk, and they were always complaining of many <laughs> issues, despite what uh, Dr. Alam was just talking about, the huge potential and being uh, doing so wonderfully, but still there are issues. There are issues of pollution, there are issues of uh, high level of salinity, there are issues of overexploitation, and likewise. What's your take? And also climate change, many are saying that are impacting the growth. What's your point on that, Dr. Hawk? Thank you very much for Department of Fisheries and Minister of Fisheries Livestock has taken so many measures for illegal fishing. Uh, Dr. Alam is uh, nicely presented that the Hitcha production is the major production of inland as well as as a marine fraction. So okay. government will now uh, give the attention to the marine fisheries cast. So in the coastal belt, uh, near about uh, 4.15 lakh fishers groups are living there. Their livelihood depend on coastal belt as well as uh, the uh, among the <laughs> district, 14 districts covered by the fishers group, 4.15 okay. lakh fishers that their livelihood depend on the fisheries. Fully fisheries. Okay. So they cast Jatka called Jatka, the baby of the Hilsha called Jatka. So government will take measure to banding uh, 65 days for marine cast banding. It's started to uh, uh, 20, 20 May to 23 July. So the you know the Bay of Bengal is the one of the unique nursing ground of the all marine Absolutely, fishes. absolutely, absolutely. So so at that time. Uh, government will ban two months, 65 days, more, more than two months, 65 days, 20, May to July. So mm -hmm. at that time, fishers are unemployed. So government will give the subsidy for 40 kg rice every month per fisher, uh, fisher hold, uh, fish, uh, uh, The state. livelihood support, livelihood support at that point of time. Okay. At that time. As well as the during the hillshire bidding, the main peak period, government will give the subsidy to the fishers group, the 20 kg for 22 days banned when the hillshire bidding occurs. And as well as the marine catch, the fish when they stop their marine catch, at that time government will give the subsidy. Okay, just one, just one supplementary quick question: Is the hillsa catch growing or it's kind of stagnant yeah. or when going up? Last year, is 5.17 lakh metric ton. Now we can expect the production will increase, boost up, and it will be 5.5 more than that. Please send something to West Bengal so that we can also test the <laughs> Padma and <laughs> Magna fishery. We are all waiting so eagerly to have the test of uh, the your your of, uh, Hilsa from the Padma and Magna. Thank you. We'll come to that. Let's go back to Dr. Dilip Kumar. Dr. Dr. Kumar, uh, very quickly, because I have two questions, one, one round and another round. We'll try to find the solution, as I said. What's the situation from the environment and the climate change point of view, Dr. Kumar? What's your take? Where are the critical points in the fishery right now, marine fishery too, particularly? Dr. Kumar. Yeah. Uh, uh, there are, uh, because of climate change, Mm -hmm. There are both negative as well as the positive changes are also there. Okay, okay. Uh, some of the factors that really just to say create negative impact is uh, well surface um, rise in the sea surface temperature. Then we have uh, mm -hmm. acidification, and uh, also just we have that, uh, and and because of these two, there are so many like. Uh, mm, uh, impacts are there, positive impact is there, that some of the, some of the fishes, uh, like uh, marine fishes, like uh, mm, 
say uh, uh, two two species, especially uh, uh, soil sardine okay. and mackerels. Okay. They have earlier they were just to see they used to occur. They used to remain mm -hmm. only during the just to see all along its southern tip. Okay. But now after that, it has moved both side east far east side also and west west along the west coast also and just up so it is a well something it is a extended uh, availability of that one so that is that is the and and the other one that due to the temperature change uh, some of these fishes are also just the on that you see they are deeper so that native uh, so Right. Because uh, uh, just catch the problem, but otherwise the availability has increased. Uh, uh, okay. Both Great. sides. Okay. And, and negative side that you see because of uh, sea level rise, uh, sea level, uh, sea level, sea warming and sea level rise, and after that you see it has got also impact that you see uh, from the say water reserves like uh, in the glacier and then. Uh, icebergs and Absolutely. so so that melts and after that it comes so that is also just to see changing the the ecosystem of the coastal region and also so, and then hmm. coast means uh, yes okay okay uh, and, uh, I'll, I'll come back to you for the solution part the uh, dr kumar i think that's a very critical part okay but before that let me let me go to dr jubrat singh uh, jalaba dr dr jalaba uh, uh, dr kumar talked about the climate change but uh, say pollution. Few day, few months back, uh, a fisher for a fisherman from uh, in West Bengal was telling me that when they are now going to catch fish, they are catching more plastic than fish. So that's the kind of reality. Uh, so what's your take, uh, Dr. Jadaba, on that? That what the human being contributing to the sea, to the water, how that is impacting and affecting the the fish catch or the quality of fishes. Yeah. You know, the seas have become the receptacle for all the garbage that we create on the land. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the innumerable rivers, their tributaries, and also the wastewater drainages from the metropolitans, they all empty into the sea. And the result is that uh, a very large quantity of untreated uh, human waste, which contains uh, both, uh, you know, liquid waste and solid waste, that all enters the sea. Okay. And this waste is impacting the aquatic life, both plant and marine, in the near shore waters. Okay. okay. And you mentioned about the plastics, you know. So, you know, there are lots of research work uh, now available to us and a very recent uh, research work, uh, I'm not uh, re recollecting the, the name, but it's, it's a, it's a multi-author and multi-country research work mm -hmm. in which it has been informed. Go to Rajeshi. Uh, Rajeshi, uh, uh, are you facing any problem while kind of exporting uh, fish uh, to the other countries, sending fish to the other countries or the aqua products because of the quality part of it or anything of that sort? Uh, Rajeshi? Uh, not so much in terms of the fish quality, but what we are uh, what we are facing is number one is that the size of the catch the mm -hmm. size of the fish is actually becoming smaller. Okay. okay. Because okay. of because the near shore resources are being depleted, <laughs> hence the larger fish is continuously getting caught. And government is not properly implement in many governments in many states are not properly implementing the net mesh sizes. Mm -hmm. As a result of which there is a depletion of the of the adult adult uh, uh, species. And the juveniles are actually left in the sea. 
So okay. what happens after that is that then the mesh size is <clears throat> made even smaller. So we are now catching smaller and smaller sizes all the time, number one. Number two is, you know, there are issues like in terms of export, the export markets, the importing countries have actually developed their own environmental norms as well as the resource protection norms. So uh, issues like turtle exclusion device, which are to be installed in the, in the fishing vessels have now actually become mandatory uh, for countries like US. And in fact, US has actually stopped importing the marine fish for a temporary period from India until the turtle exclusion device is mandatorily installed <clears throat> in all or most of the Indian vessels. When, till when this, this ban is on? Till which period? This is this is going on now. This is going on right so now. The ban is right. So yes, as, as of now, US not, is not taking. US as of now, US is not taking. US, I should not say it's not taking. There are ways of getting around problems also, <laughs> ways of getting around regulations also. <laughs> but if you go in a straight line path, the marine exports of India are getting extremely hindered into the U.S. market because U.S. is in, insisting on the, in, on, on the uh, installation of EEDs into the fish, fishing vessels. And they have, in fact, sent two teams already. Okay. The government of India has made a presentation and they will be sending further survey teams only after the clearance of which India will be again allowed to export I money. Think it's an EEDs. extremely important piece of news which Rajesh has just shared that I think because Today, it, it is US, tomorrow it may be European Union, you never know. So you, we need to be very careful about our own resources and how you are packaging them internationally. That, that's, that's great, Rajashi. I think that's a very important point. And I know uh, as a very, very important person of this whole uh, cog in the will that you are really working on that. I'll come back to the last round with also you, that the solution part. But before that, let me very quickly go over to the, the other participants, first to, uh, first to Maldives, uh, first to Maldives. Uh, Dr. Nasir, uh, very quickly, uh, is there environmental issues as important as you find in India? You have heard the Indian experts talking about pollution and climate change and likewise. Uh, Dr. Nasir, what's the situation very briefly in your country? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, you can all see that the Maldives is uh, totally different to other uh, bigger neighbors. Um, although, uh, and very, not only is it very small in size, but it is a country built up with uh, entirely of coral reefs. So whatever we do is intricately linked to coral reefs and their health and vitality. Uh, our, our main fishery, the tuna fishery, is uh, we depend on uh, the bait which comes from coral reefs. So um, if climate, uh, if, if we can't address uh, the climate change issues, if we can't address the coral reef health in relation to climate change, then uh, our our whole way of um, fishing will be will have to change. You know, so this is this is our main concern: um, the coral reefs, mangroves, seagrass beds, um, nursery areas. I mean, all these uh, are um, predicted to uh, decline over the next um, many uh, decades uh, due to uh, climate um, induced uh, issues. And uh, so, so we are we are very concerned about climate change and what it will do to our overall fisheries. Okay, okay, okay. I think that that's I, I know. But Maldives is one of the part of the world which is being extremely impacted by climate change. And uh, when in the climate summits globally, often Maldives scenario is being talked mm -hmm. about as, as as one of the case studies. But I think from the fishery point of view, it's equally important. Let's go. Let's go to Sri Lanka very quickly. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Pushpa, you can hear me. Uh, yes. Very quickly about about the situation. Uh, is there the like India? Are you facing the same problem of environment? We need not elaborate, but are you facing the same problem of pollution and climate change in fishery sector in in Sri Lanka? Yes, sir. Uh, conditions: uh, pollution, climate change, uh, the change of the rainfall patterns. Everything same to uh, Sri Lanka, same as India. Yeah. Same as India. Yes, yeah, same as India. And also uh, pollution also affects into the all the breeding grounds and changing water quality and uh, plastic quality, solid waste, liquid waste, everything okay. same. Yeah. Okay. Let let me let me ask you uh, uh, the, another question. I think which I will then come to all all the experts. 
that we have all heard that as you just said that you have having similar problems to uh, like india and uh, we have also heard the bangladesh expert talking about their situation which is not very different and maldives is also there and likewise so don't you think that and and, and also raju she was pointing out that uh, that uh, maybe other south asian countries the boats are coming to the indian territory catching the indian fish and we are perhaps sometime trying to go to over so don't you think that we need a regional policy on 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 fishery but mainly of the marine fishery because we are sharing the, the sea so don't you think that this is something which need to be worked at may not be the government level to start with but must be in the academic level or the other experts level what's your take on that Dr. Pushpa, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, in Sri Lanka, we need uh, the, yeah, intergovernmental cooperation is an important thing. Huh. Uh, that's why uh, regional cooperation as well as uh, the country-wise is essential to cope up with the challenges of climate change in inland fisheries and also marine fisheries. Both is an important. Uh, So, don't you think that it needs to be strengthened up to be to be in, in future, Dr. Pushpa, very quickly? Yeah, uh, blue economy also important, and also the greater cooperation among the, the South Asian okay. countries, Great. as well as the Asian countries. It's important. Absolutely, yeah. many Great thanks. Attention. Let me let me go to the Bangladesh. Uh, maybe maybe Dr. Alam to start, and then uh, I'll, I'll come back come to the other expert, Dr. Yeah. Alam. Uh, first of all, that. the environmental issues and the climate issues uh, any assessment that how it is impacting the bangladesh fishery very quickly yes, uh, as you know bangladesh is uh, one of the worst suffering country in the world and is the most uh, worst sufferer maybe because of uh, 10 to 15% of the land goes under water every day due to yes. uh, poor tidal tidal uh, flow because uh, bay of bengal we have uh, with us uh, dr I am Jyotish Singh Yadav and Dr. Dilip Kumar, two very uh, prominent uh, marine fisheries expert. Uh, they all know that uh, Bay of Bengal has got some unique characteristics. This is four distinct tidal flow in 24 hours. That this is very worstly visible in India and Bangladesh. And uh, what happening? All every day, uh, 10 to 15 percent of the land area goes under so, water. This so the problem is another, huge. Yes. Another is a salinity intrusion. It's a oh. very severe due to global warming and the temperature rise, uh, along with pollution, along with other impact. Salinity intrusion is a uh, very severe. So coastal aquaculture has becoming very very uh, problematic nowadays in our in our country. Another is due to temperature ra- rise and uh, warming, coastal is loss, quality loss. Coastal is loss uh, are of many different kinds. Uh, some losses are physical, for example, discard and other things. And uh, post harvest quality loss also one of the most important issues okay. nowadays because of global warming. We have to take in uh, very well, uh, take care of it. Uh, okay. Otherwise, uh, it will have because post if we control post harvest loss, we can add value to this fish uh, without intensifying uh, fishing effort. We can reduce fishing effort if you protect post harvest loss. This is one of the important issue we should think of. I think that's extremely important. Let me let me yes. hear from the other expert from the Bangladesh. Uh, that uh, now I'm coming to the last part of it. We have hardly seven eight minutes to go. The regional cooperation. Uh, there are these all these countries are dependent on fisheries. So many million of people are depending on fishery on this all these countries. Be it India, be it Bangladesh, mm-hmm. Sri Lanka, Maldives, and also Pakistan. We don't have any Pakistani expert today, but I know that Pakistan is also having a lot of fishery but are we talking among ourselves the government may have the geopolitical reasons to not to do that but don't it is it is it because the climate change is impacting the anthropogenic pollution is impacting we need to talk together and find a solution together uh, so what's the situation let me let me let me hear from uh, the bangladesh that what what is the situation uh, uh, dr dr rashidul yeah can i supplement one uh, more uh, uh, point uh, to mr alam dr alam So, siltation is one of the another factor in Bangladesh. Uh, due to climate change, the siltation uh, 
every each and every river are silted so if the desert depth are decreasing then it's a problem <coughs> for production and free catch okay. so uh, now i come uh, come your uh, question uh, you can say that uh, the geo uh, geo cooperation bangladesh and india has already a cooperation every uh, year there uh, two, both countries sit together for uh, water share so it's a uh, uh, last three or four years uh, we cannot get any benefit from the, the regional cooperation so i think it's a better solution to throw the platform of shark if we can yes cast this issue through shark then uh, it's a so shark you feel is a good platform to discuss it more seriously because now we talk about the blue economy so when you are talking about the blue economy you need to talk the whole region together i i know the african countries who fight among themselves talk together when the issues of common interest come but why can't we do that in in south asia we need to do that let me let me go to uh, dr nasir uh, that uh, you would like to add anything uh, dr nasir or uh, in, in in this but anything yes. ever, um, more you would like to add i i think when it comes to uh, uh, management of, of fisheries um, the way we fish in the maldives uh, which is uh, fishing from uh, fishing from a migratory um, stocks of the indian ocean so we cannot uh, manage uh, indian ocean fisheries indian ocean tuna fisheries on our own okay so we are an integral part just like the other countries of the indian ocean sri lanka bangladesh uh, india we are part of the indian ocean tuna commission so we lay a lot of emphasis on managing uh, regional fisheries through the uh indian ocean tuna commission and and uh, we we are fully engaged with the uh, commission because because it will be impossible for us to um to uh, uh to manage our fisheries <laughs> totally based on um on on uh on tuna and tuna like species unlike uh, other uh, coastal um fisheries of uh, so, some of, some of our neighbors so uh, we we lay a, a lot of emphasis on uh regional management of so the regional cooperation is uh, yes is key but i Very... i do think that there, there are uh, there are um ways that we can cooperate uh, among ourselves um amongst the nations of the uh, uh south asian countries and dr yadav yadav would know where Uh, uh, members from these uh, mem memberships are totally focused on uh, small scale fisheries artisanal okay. fisheries and uh, mainly coastal fisheries so this this sort of engagements uh, with wind up but before that Ra rajeshi as a as a commercial as a market point of view don't you see the need of this kind of regional cooperation to enhance the value of the product and enhance the business uh, interest to a greater degree rajeshi what's your take on that very quickly very very quickly because i i know you're running short of time the government of india has come up with a national fisheries policy in 2020 okay okay now india being a party to several international agreements to deter prevent and eliminate illegal unreported unregulated fishing the government wishes to establish a sound mechanism among all the neighboring countries to ensure that the indian fishing fleet does not engage in uh, unregulated fishing okay. uh, in contravention of any national laws and any um, bilateral international uh, or regional co conventions or obligations okay concerning fisheries which are in, uh, applicable to india so we are actually looking at uh, regional cooperation at a at a government level already and the the three quick bullet points which are required for for uh, improvement of the sector one is the deep sea fishing for harnessing tap potential of high value resources like okay. tuna tuna okay. like deep sea fishing okay squids etc deep sea fishing 
some of the trust areas for sustainable utilization of deep, deep sea fishery resources are an optimal fleet size, which is also very important, okay. modernization of fishing vessels and fleet size, and uh, the prevention of illegal entry of foreign vessels into Indian waters, okay. and as, as well as diversification of the catch and value okay. So The all points you have made, that, many of them are actually being also important to take hold of other countries. Otherwise, when you are talking about the foreign boats not to come, you need to talk with the uh, other countries to ensure that. So yes, it's very clear that uh, regional cooperation is definitely very important, not yes, theoretically, but practically, actually. It's both discussive as well as well as preventive. Absolutely, for both, for both. Let me go to first Dr. Okay. Jivaraj and then I'll wind up with Dr. Dilip Kumar. Dr. Jivaraj, uh, you have heard the question. Your take, because two of you are very experienced in the sector, been working for a long, long time. Do you think it's really practical, a feasible option to make a kind of a platform, a regional platform to talk about this issue? May not be government level, but the tier two, tier three level? Dr. Jivaraj. Yeah, you know, as Dr. Nasir uh, mentioned, um, the Bay of Bengal program is a regional body, you know. Yes. yes. And it's been in existence for the last 41 years. From 1979 until 2003, it was a field project of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. And all the countries surrounding the Bay of Bengal <clears throat> were members of this organization. In 2003, it became an intergovernmental body. And at the moment, four countries, Maldives, uh, Sri Lanka, India, and Bangladesh are the contracting parties. And the other four countries are the cooperating parties. Okay. And there's been excellent cooperation between all these countries in the sustainable development and management of fisheries resources. So, you know, you have a very strong platform existing in the region. And uh, a larger part of the knowledge sharing, larger part of uh, sharing success stories, the South-South cooperation, et cetera, that is all happening because of these intergovernmental bodies in the region. Dr. Nasir also mentioned about the uh, Indian Ocean Tuna Commission, which is uh, a management body, and all the tuna matters are being handled by you know the uh, uh, by the IOTC, and the remaining uh, things. You know, the Bay of Bengal program is not a management body; it's an advisory body. It's a platform bringing countries together, as I said, you know, for knowledge sharing, technology transfer, cooperation, South-South cooperation. So there's, there are excellent mechanisms, you know, for- You need to uh, perhaps strengthen it further. Yeah, yeah, definitely, you know, uh, the sky is the limit, you know, you can always strengthen yes, these absolutely. bodies and, and move forward. I also want, to, also want to make a correction, you know, our industry friend has been repeatedly saying that foreign fishing fleets are fishing in the Indian EZ. I think this uh, viewpoint needs to uh, be corrected. It's not like that, you know. Foreign fishing fleets are not fishing. Yes, there are accidental incursions into oh. our EZ, and our boats also go into the other EZ accidentally. But there's no organized plundering or organized incursion of foreign fishing fleets into our EZ. I thought, you know, I must correct this. Otherwise, it might send wrong notice and government of India also might be concerned with the, you know, this sort of statements made in a in a platform, you know, which would have a universal audience. Thank okay. you very much, Jayanta. with due respect, I would like to... Uh, very quickly, very quickly. With that. Very quickly, Rajshri. I would like to disagree with that because there no, are... No, we, 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 all, uh, we all have agreed to disagree, so no issue on that. So definitely it's a matter of perception, which may be considered uh, accidental by... Uh, Yeah. Look for more uh, inter-country uh, kind of uh, assemblage on the fishery, the marine fishery issue in the South in a structured manner. Dr. Kumar. I, th I, I think it is very good. And then, uh, and fortunately, we have BOBP in place. We are talking only about marine fisheries. So if you consider marine fisheries, we have already a platform like a very effective platform and then already sustainable platform that is already working. I think we should make best use of that one. Okay. When we are talking about, well, 
so far marine fisheries and climate yes. change uh, impacts are concerned. Second thing, I fully agree with Dr. Uh, Yadav Sahib, what he has told uh, about that, you see, the foreign invasion. No, no, no. Uh, I understand that. That's a different supposition. No, it is not. Up. And in fact, I expected um, Dr. Banerjee Sahib, he, he, I, I thought that he's from the commerce, commercial side. As, uh, he will just to see enlighten all of us about this uh, business prospect, how it is being affected. Somehow just uh, but he is very good, sound in uh, technically very sound in the management of fisheries that he has uh, shared already. But uh, but in addition, I would like to say that we need to have a collection for that. We have a platform that all countries need to be active in that one. But at the national level, also we need to do a lot of things. I, I understand that. Level, I understand that. Doing it, and, and at the national, if you are able to do our experience, we can share failure and success both. That is really just going to help the entire region. So some, some points I would like to say that if we say something like we need to develop and implement some management plans to boost the resilience of inland and marine systems. Okay. So this is, this is very important thing. <laughs> then uh, something like habitat mapping, and also see that you see how it is just see being affected and then how we can uh, really contain. The other okay. one that you see at the, at the literary level, science level also, we need to have uh, research terms also to see that how the, uh, say, um, uh, some of the genes that, that is- Okay, I think there are scopes, as you said. No, no, absolutely, Dr. Kumar, I think there are scopes, genes. many, many scopes to work on that. We, 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 have, we named this program Fishes on the Run uh, and, and, and we find during the course of discussion that uh, yes, I personally feel after kind of hearing all of you, there are ample scope to increase discussion. It is quite clear even within the India, there are three participants, we, yeah. Yeah. we are not agreeing on certain things. There are always the, we can always agree to disagree, but the point is maybe the information is not percolating to everybody in an equal manner. So clearly, uh, Dr. Nasir was talking about the importance of climate change. Uh, the Bangladesh experts are talking about the importance of pollution and climate change. So the Indians. So there are common problems. There are common prospects. So if we want to maximize this prospect and minimize the problem, we need to talk. We need to be more in touch with one another. And I believe this program today may, may act as a precursor to that maybe more structured talks. But today with this, and thanks to all of you. It's a wonderful, wonderful session. And I really would like to build up on that in future. With your time, we'll be doing another round of program to know in further details what's happening there. And maybe in that day, Rajushi and Dr. Kumar will we again discuss whether the incursion is uh, by, by default or by design. We'll do that in future. But as of today, we conclude here. Thanks, thanks to everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you very much. Bye. Thanks a lot. to develop new treatments and uh, to develop uh, new vaccines as we have.
haven't I? By the way, I can today announce that over half a million people, more than 500,000 people 